I had a moment in my life where what I was experiencing felt like too much. And I kept spiraling out. I kept focusing on the thing that was bringing me down. And it felt like this feeling of pain would never go away. It was so intense, and I'm sure so many people can relate to that feeling. I wanted to end my life in that moment. I had resources that I tapped into. I had friends that I leaned on. As time went on, those dark clouds passed. But in the moment, it feels like they'll never pass. Depression is much more common than we think. Everybody experiences depression. I, for a long time, thought, once I become a pro skateboarder, then I'll have everything I need, then I'll be fulfilled. But as I started to get closer to that goal, I realized more and more that no matter what goal I achieve, no matter what desire I chase, whenever I achieve that desire or goal, the inner problems and the inner turmoil that I feel will be with me, even after I achieve those things. You know, it's not essentially comfortable to talk about these things. I don't inherently feel very comfortable doing this interview. <laughs> That's the God's honest truth, but for whatever reason, I feel like it's important to share inner dialogue about stress and mental health. No matter what position you have in life, whether you're a famous actor or a politician or whatever it may be, you're not spared suffering. Everybody will experience suffering to varying degrees, and unfortunately, some more than others. I don't think you can completely eradicate depression or sadness or uncomfortable feelings, but I think your relationship with them can change and that can inherently change the way that you feel. I try every day to have a meditation practice and I try to have a breathing practice. Your breathing is directly connected to your heart rate. One of the breathing techniques that I use, I learned from Andrew Huberman, it's called a physiological sigh. I'm Andrew Huberman, and I'm a professor of neurobiology and ophthalmology at Stanford School of Medicine. One of the first things to realize is that all our states of mind, happiness, sadness, depression, all of those reflect states of mind and body, okay? So once you understand that, then you say, okay, well then how do you change these states? If you're in a dark place, how do you get out of that dark place? Well, you do that not by trying to use the mind to control the mind, that never works. You use it by using the body to control the mind. I believe everybody should have at least two tools in their breathing kit, so to speak. One is a real-time tool that will allow you to adjust down, reduce stress and anxiety in real time very fast. And that tool is called the physiological sigh. It involves doing two inhales through your nose and then a long exhale through your mouth. So it's like this. Physiological size can be done any place, anytime, anywhere, I suppose besides when you're underwater, and they will allow you to very quickly reduce your stress level. It's the quickest way to bring your body from a fight or flight sympathetic state to a rest and digest parasympathetic state. I use it every day. I've been using it while we've been doing this interview. Skating helps me so much when I'm stressed out. Your skating can essentially become a moving meditation. The way in which self-generated forward movement quiets these or reduces these areas of the brain that are involved in fear and anxiety, that makes skateboarding its own kind of form of meditation. There's very few things in life that feel quite like trying something over and over again than making it and riding away. It's just that there's no replacement for that feeling. One thing we can say for sure, looking to and thinking about the various people that we've lost over the years, is that almost always they stop skateboarding first. 
if people are dropping out, they're not they're not skateboarding as much, you you got to push them on. The process of strengthening your mind comes back to meditation. The emotions of anger, depression, sadness, whatever it may be, they're temporary visitors to the blue sky that is you. Unlike blood pressure or a gaping wound in our skin, mental health doesn't have a signature feature on the surface of the body that we can rely on. We can't look at somebody and say, oh, they're depressed. Now, we might be able to do that if we know them to normally be smiling and kind of peppy and like and happy and suddenly they're, you know, they're carrying themselves very differently. But the only thing that we really have to explain how we feel inside is language. I think everyone's more apt to share what's going on with themselves when you're in an activity. I just, it's, it's hard to pick up the phone and just call someone to talk. But if you're out, you're skateboarding, you're doing things that, you know, that's when sometimes people will kind of open up a bit about what's going on. So one of the things that's especially amazing about skateboarding is the fact that it's a very close-knit community. And this to me is what's especially troubling about any time that I hear that there's a suicide in the skateboard community. That just shouldn't happen because the community is so tight. People are spending so much time together. It's not like showing up at a field, kicking around a ball or shooting hoops and then going your separate ways. You know, no disrespect to soccer and basketball, but it's a different thing altogether. The most important thing for people to realize is that it is possible to build up your resilience to stress, anxiety, and depression, but that requires acknowledging stress, anxiety, and depression. What can we do better to support those in need? For me, it's always been developing the virtue of compassion. You never know what somebody on the other side of you has just gone through a moment ago, 10 minutes ago, a year ago, 10 years ago, that's making them act the way that they are acting. So the best thing that we can do as human beings is develop compassion and develop forgiveness and understanding so that the next time somebody crosses your path that's hard to deal with, maybe you'll see them in a different light. If you want change in the world, that change starts with you. So it's up to us to make that change happen each and every day.